you are watching Redicon. Okay, that was alignment. So in the quick sagittal layout, we checked for any possible alignment issue, spasm, scoliosis, kyphosis, and spondylolisthesis. Next is body height. In B for body height, we will have a quick look at developmental anomalies, hemangiomas, mets, fractures, pathological fractures, osteophytes, syndesmophytes, and end plate changes. Please make sure that there is no developmental anomaly such as segmentation or fusion anomaly, for example, hemivertebrate. Most of these anomalies will result in certain alignment disorders. Coronal view of the cervical spine demonstrates a hemivertebra. You can see the disc space above it. However, inferior disc is not fully formed. So that appears to be a partially segmented hemivertebra resulting in alignment disorder. Let's have a look at this case. It is a great example of a congenital anomaly seen on sagittal sequences. Here, L5 signal intensity appears dark. Please note that sagittal sequences may be your only chance to pick it up. Most of the axial acquisitions are not volume blocks anymore and slices are taken at disc angles and do not include pedicles or vertebral bodies. Because axial slices might not show any vertebral body anomalies, you will have to rely on scouts scanograms or sagittal slices. In this patient, abnormality was picked up on the sagittal slices and axial images were taken which showed failure of fusion of little halves of the vertebral body because of persistent notochordal tissue between them. A CT was performed which showed classic appearances of the vertebral vertebra. Let's look at this case. This case shows sagittal images of hemangioma in L3 vertebral body. Typical appearances are high T1 and T2 signal intensity with enhancement in post-contrast sequences. Incidence is approximately 10%. Infrequently, these can turn symptomatic and cause neurological deficits such as cord compression through any of the four reported mechanisms such as epidural extension, two, extension of the involved vertebrae by causing spinal canal stenosis, or sometimes it can cause a third way of spontaneous epidural hemorrhage or finally pathological burst fractures. This video is presented in collaboration with Radicon Institute of Radiology. You are welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for updates. For more modules in radiology CMEs, please visit our website www.radicon.org.